Okay, good day everybody. God bless you all. Welcome to today's study of the Word of God. We're going to pick it up today, 1 Samuel chapter 31. We're going to complete the book of 1 Samuel. Before we get started today, let's go to our Father in prayer. So, Yahweh, Heavenly Father, pray that you open eyes, open ears of your children today. Let us receive the wisdom and instruction that you would have us receive from your Word uh, today. So in Yeshua's precious name, let's get right into our study today. Book of 1 Samuel chapter 31, verse 1. And it reads, Now the Philistines fought against Israel. And the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. Excuse me, verse 2. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab, Abinadab also called Ishui in chapter 14, verse 49, and Melchishua, Saul's sons, Jonathan being the one that David was so close to, verse 3. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was sore wounded of the archers. He wasn't uh, dead yet, but he was hurt really bad. Verse 4, Then said Saul unto his armor bearer, Draw thy sword, and thrust me through therewith lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me or tor torture me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. He just went ahead and did himself in the rest of the way. Verse 5. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with him. Six. So Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men that same day together. Uh, there's also in First Chronicles chapter 10 verses 13 and 14, you're going to get... Uh, God's standpoint and reason for the history of Saul's death. Here we get um, we get uh, the standpoint from uh, from man's perspective. Chronicles is going to be uh, a history from God's perspective, and uh, here and Kings we're going to have uh, man's or here we're going to have man's perspective. Excuse me, seven. And when the men of Israel that were on the other side of the valley, that were on the other side of the valley, and they that were on the other side Jordan, saw that the men of Israel fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them. Verse 8. And it came to pass on the morrow. When the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his three sons fallen in Mount Gilboa. Verse 9. And they cut off his head, and stripped off his armor, and sent into the land of the Philistines round about, to publish it in the house of their idols and among the people. They were proud of their kill. 10. And they put his armor in the house of Ashtaroth, and they fastened his body to the wall in of Bethshan. <laughs> now, this is uh, additional to the history given in First Chronicles chapter ten, verse ten, where uh, it reads that they fastened his head to the wall of Bethshan. Verse 12, all the valiant men arose and went all night 
and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Bethshan, and came to Jabesh and burnt them there. Bethshan meaning house of ease, and uh, this would be the valiant men of Israel going to pick up the body of Saul to, to keep it uh, from being uh, disrespected and displayed like that. <laughs> 13. And they took their bones and buried them under a tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. They fasted. I'm sure they also they mourned as well for uh, Saul and his sons. Okay, and that's going to conclude uh, today's study of the Word of God. And that's also going to conclude the book of 1 Samuel. Uh, I love you all. Because you love studying God's word. Um, what is God's word? It's the best story. Uh, true story ever written. Um, it's God's love letter. He wrote to you. And to I. And to whomsoever will read it. <laughs> Any question that you can have. About life. Uh, and, and. Circumstances that you may find yourself in in life can be answered in this word of God uh, Mark chapter 13 verse 26 I believe it is let me double check where God says behold I have foretold you all things I want to double check so make sure I don't tell you wrong 13 20, verse 23, not 26. Behold, take ye heed, but take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you all things. Christ foretells us all things about what's going to befall us in the end times. And uh, throughout the word of God, we're, we're foretold all things and, and prepared for any situation that you can find yourself in in this, in this world. Uh, God's word is full of wisdom it's full of knowledge uh, and it'll give you peace of mind so whenever you study it uh, it makes God happy and whenever you make God happy he's going to give you that peace of mind uh, that is priceless you know you can have uh, at, at risk of running my mouth too much you can have everything in this world that your heart may desire like uh, material things and things of that nature but if you don't have peace of mind you're not going to be happy and that is where true happiness and true joy comes from is peace of mind and where do you get that peace of mind you get it in the spirit of our heavenly father and you get it in his word the word of god so study it uh, share it and get that peace of mind that you so that we so need. Uh, word of God is your spiritual food. Uh, don't forget to eat. All right, love you all. Do not miss the next lecture, and thank you all for watching.